Hey guys, welcome to Jeep Solid Garage. So this isn't my typical Jeep off-roading, repair video, that kind of stuff. Um, if you found this channel because you want to set up a pool, this is uh, Costco's uh, what best way pool. I couldn't find a good video on how to set it up, so I thought, hey, I'll make one. If you want a Jeep video, a Jeep repair video, skip this one, come back next week and I'll have something up then. But this uh, video is just going to be about setting this pool up and uh, all the steps to go through. This is actually the second one I've set up, so I kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, the instructions on it aren't great. Um, honestly, I give the instructions like a C-. minus. This is just uh, the process I went through to set this pool up and what I think of it. Here's some of the uh, important key points you got to remember. The very first step, you definitely want to take some extra time and make sure the spot you're using is very level. You only get one chance to level this, so make sure you do a really good job. Here I'm actually using a laser level, and now the instructions recommend don't put your pool on gravel. This is actually pea gravel that I'm moving around here, so it's smooth. I think if you're using three-quarter minus gravel, you know, regular gravel that people are used to, it can be kind of sharp and rough on the bottom of the pool, so they don't recommend that. They also do not recommend putting it on a bed of sand either. But, like I said, just make sure you get a nice, flat, level surface. Here I'm rolling out some landscape fabric. I'm putting this down just to add a little extra barrier, a little extra level of protection for the bottom of the pool. Okay. And that right there is a complete joke. There is no way you're setting this thing up in 30 minutes unless you really know what you're doing and you're just setting the pool up and none of the accessories like the, uh, the filter, the skimmer, the ladder. And this right here, I strongly disagree with. Put one to two inches of water in the pool to cover the floor. Once the pool floor is slightly covered, gently smooth out the wrinkles. Well, my experience is, if you get two inches of water in this pool, you are not moving the bottom of that floor at all. Um, you're, it, there's so much weight that you just you can't smooth the wrinkles out. So as you're filling as you're filling the pool up. Just be sure that you're smoothing wrinkles out as you're going along. Once you once you have two inches of water in there, it's too late. That's why you look up your legs and not your back. <laughs> and now like this uh, lightweight blue tarp here, there is no mention of it in the instructions. I'm assuming you can put it underneath the pool and that's what I think I'm gonna do. Because last time I set one of these up, there was no other use for it. So I guess it's just an added barrier to uh, debris underground. So see the bottom? Yeah. So what we really need to pay attention to is just having the bottom like centered where we want it in the middle of our pad. Okay. So looks to me like it needs to go that way a little bit. Yeah. So that way. Okay. And then this way. See! How does this thing don't have a number? Get that right there. Just match it up. Here we got an A and a B. We're going to uh, start hooking these together, making sure that our holes here are on the bottom all lined up. So we got an A, B. We're going to have another A on the end here. Okay, you have to kind of push it in. So you shove it all the way in so that the holes are lined up with the holes in the pool. Like, so one there and one there. Oh, okay. They go the we have two F's on each end and three E's on each end. 
and then bar C in the between. So we're going to start by taking bar C and putting it through. So on each side of the pool, there's three straps from underneath. Make sure those are all out. And those three U braces, uh, I call them U braces, they're U shaped. So they just snap in the top up there and then through those straps on the bottom and keep them pulled out nice and tight. So now I'm going around and just kind of getting a rough outline of the base of the pool. So we know that we have it in the exact spot we want it because once you start adding water you're not moving it so i just want to get a real rough outline of the base here so we know we have it exactly where we want it just kind of helps to poke down the edges to get a real good idea So here she's going around the edge, getting all the wrinkles out, kind of pushing against the side and lifting her other foot up to kind of just straighten out the bottom. And you want to be doing this uh, immediately after you start filling it. Like I said, once you get one to two inches of water in this thing, like the instructions say, you're not moving the bottom at all. Are you kind of dragging the whole thing over? Good. Okay. Which jelly beans you want? Assorted flavors, like original flavors or sour? Hmm. Uh, I don't care. Either one sounds good. So the last pool that I set up, it was about this point where I started working on the ladder that it really dawned on me that that 30 minute advertisement, 10 minutes just to set up the ladder. You still got the pump and the filter and you gotta add the sand and making sure everything's level. There's, there's no way. On the ladder, you'll notice uh, the top is labeled A and B. There's A, this black one, yeah. So there's A and B. But notice that, uh, so essentially you're gonna have a white side and a black side. You just take these little clips, slide it down over the top, and there's a side with a ridge on it and side A on the step goes to the white side and it just slides down onto that notch. And on this top piece here, Notice there's two different size bolts. This one's a little bit longer than that one. Yes, they hide a few hoses inside of the bolts. All right, we're gonna set up the filter on all these connections. Before, be sure you get one of these uh, rubber gaskets in each spot before you start hooking hoses up. And assemble our tubing here. Make sure this o-ring seats in this little groove down in there. It's a little cumbersome to get these down in there, but they kind of slip into place. I put these clamps just behind the uh, o-ring. I don't want it right on top of it. Well, on the 
outflow from the pool, you're going to take uh, two of these guys, slide them in there nice and deep. So now there's two outputs. That's an output, output, and that's the return right down there. I'm going to shove these onto here. Good and tight. Then take one of our clamps, one of our nice plastic clamps, put it on there. So there's a minimum and maximum level to fill the sand up here. So yeah, and you just have to let the pool fill up and then you're done. And as it's filling up, you just want to be going around uh, checking all your braces. Uh, one thing you want to watch is that these legs on the ends here aren't getting like tucked underneath. And uh, like if you look on the inside of the pool, you'll see an indentation where the leg is. So you want to be grabbing these guys and just make sure they're pulled out and on your brace nicely. So now that the water level is beneath those two outlet ports, the uh, return port there is still above water, but that's fine. We can go ahead and finish setting up the uh, filter now. There's just one thing you definitely want to do before you run this filter. So now because we added all that new sand to this, you would think the sand would be clean, right? But no, there's a lot of little fine particles and debris in it. So we want to uh, backwash this or actually rinse it. So we're going to take our outlet port off here. Save our little rubber stopper. We're going to put the valve here over onto rinse. And now when we turn it on here, look at this nasty brown water that's going to come out initially. So we just want to wait for that to clear up. We're rinsing the sand right now. There we go. That didn't take very long. That just cleans all that initial debris out of the sand. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and put it on a filter and turn it on. And here's a look at the finished product. And you'll notice as you get the pool all the way full, the sides uh, kind of straighten out. How it was bowed in, it's all pushed out nicely. All of our legs on the side, uh, these posts go behind the strap there. And then uh, I've got it on some wood blocks down there. That one needs to be pushed back a little bit. But you definitely want to have these uh, legs on wood blocks. Otherwise, what happens, the kids end up splashing water out and gets it all muddy on the side here. And then this will sink down into the ground if you don't have these on some type of block. So I just used a couple uh, two by sixes and that'll work for this season. But you could also use like a concrete block or something. But you just definitely have to put these braces on something so it doesn't sink into the ground. Now I have my filter and solar heater on the back side here. It ends up uh, in the sun all afternoon, so that'll work. I just didn't want the solar heater on the front side. And the connections for the filter. So we just have those little hose clamps on there, and the tubing goes right over the top of uh, the little part that sticks out. And we have the two outputs from the pool coming down here to the pump, and then up over through the filter. And it's on filter right now, although the pump's off. And then down to our solar heater, across, and then back to the return to the pool. And then later in the summer, when the pool actually starts to get too hot, we'll actually end up taking this uh, solar heater out of the equation. So to do that, what I'm going to do is take the return and bring that down and hook it up here. Actually, I'll probably reverse those two. So this going to the filter actually comes or from the filters, so we'll go this tube here, we'll hook up there, and then this side here, we'll hook up to that hose, the end right there. Then it'll end up coming from the filter and then just going right back to the pool, kind of bypassing this. 
because otherwise the uh, pool will get too hot. And one final tip, if you have little kids around and you want to keep the ladder away from them, uh, some people will take the ladder out. My preference is actually to take the ladder and put it inside of the pool. That way they don't have any access to the ladder at all. They can't push it over next to the pool to use it to climb in. Just one little uh, safety measure I like to use. So overall, I expect this pool to last for a number of years, maybe four or five years of use out of this thing. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you did anything different or have any tips or tricks or things you did, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.